Hi, I'm Greg. Welcome to Affect Studio. I'm here to test new coupling capacitors in valve or tube amps, depending on which part of the world you're from, and find out if there's any truth to the belief that the tone changes as they break or burn in. Now, when I first started building valve or tube amps, I read about coupling capacitors, or CAPS for short, breaking or burning in, and the tone improving with use. They were supposed to gain dimension and depth and, you know, more 3D-like sort of quality over time. The coupling capacitors in your amp connect the different gain stages and are the main path our signal takes passing through the amp. They filter out unwanted DC voltage that's needed, you know, to actually power the valves, uh, but we don't want to hear that and leave the, you know, the AC signal, the waveform intact. And um, the value of the capacitor dictates where the amp cuts off the bottom end, the low frequency cutoff. So a smaller value is gonna let through less low mids and bottom end, and a bigger one's gonna you know, cut off at a lower frequency, therefore giving you a fatter sound, which of course will affect the way the amp actually performs. Uh, if it's too big, it's gonna sound mushy or you know, et cetera. Uh, that's a separate thing, but that's what they do in your amp. So around the time I was starting to build amps and reading about capacitors breaking in, I had two separate conversations with electrical engineer friends both of whom um, worked with computers, not with you know audio, uh, about this idea, and they both said it was absolute rubbish. There was no chance that capacitors were going to improve with age. They could deteriorate and lose you know their value and not perform as well over time. But the chance of them actually improving with usage, um, they said, was you know absolute nonsense. So being me and you know liking to know things for sure, not liking hearsay and rumor, I wanted to find out either way. I had no bias. I just was very curious, and so I set up a test. Now, I can't find the original recordings I did for those, uh, but fortunately, um, I had to do it again as the results were quite different to what I got the first time. I set this up so the only variable between these clips is how long the music has been running through the capacitors. I used a different set of valves and a fixed load for the break-in, so the speakers and tubes we're hearing are only used for the recordings and wouldn't change. I then ran Leo Kotke's 6 and 12 string guitars through the amp on repeat, uh, so it was getting guitar frequencies passing through it, so if that influenced, you know, the way they, um, the molecules wanted to change, at least it was getting some good playing. I used one of my Tweed Champ style amps, as it only uses two coupling caps, and I figured that would give us the most accurate results. Uh, so here's the amp with a new set of Mallory 150s at zero hours, and then after 95 hours of audio passing through it. So you heard the difference? No, I didn't either. Um, now focusing in on just tiny sections, you know, on the computer, looking at the, the waveform, um, listening to those, I maybe heard a slight difference, but the fact that it's a maybe means that basically, no, it's not significant and doesn't really count for anything. So I tried another test using some brand new orange drop capacitors. Um, and after 48 hours, there was absolutely no change there either. And in fact, if there was a change with the Mallory's, it definitely wasn't with the orange drops. At this point, I was feeling quite confused, as when I had done this test previously, there was a definite improvement in the tone between the 0 and 24 hours. Now, between 24 and 48 hours, there was a slight improvement again, not as much as 0 to 24, and beyond 48, there wasn't much change. It was pretty subtle. Now, I played these clips to other people and even sent some MP3s um, so that, you know, people could actually hear the difference, and they did. Um, so it wasn't like I was biased and wanting to hear something that wasn't there. As I said before, I had no stake either way. I was just curious. So I wondered if I should try it with a fresh set of filter capacitors. The electrolytic filter capacitors would seem unimportant other than keeping the power supply clean, but do directly affect the tone and response of the amp. They also wear out and need replacing every 10 to 20 years, so clearly, you know, change relatively quickly. So I built a brand new 5E3 circuit Tweed Deluxe style amp. Um, everything brand new, um, new chassis, new sockets, new knobs even, uh, new valves. 
And the first audio that played through it is the zero hours you're about to hear, um, apart from a bit of hum and hiss, you know, when I was checking the bias. Um, so it hadn't been, you know, used. And after 48 hours, no change still. So at this point, I started to wonder if maybe the valves had been what were breaking in. I know when I did the test previously, I'd left the preamp valves in um, for the burn-in plus the recording, and um, you know maybe they'd been improving with age, um, with some audio passing. So at this point, I left all the valves in. So what you're about to hear is zero hours for the amp, brand new unplayed amp, and then 96 hours for the capacitors, and 48 of those hours, the last 48, the valves were also burning in. So I started to wonder if maybe the premium capacitors I was using that time were too good and they went through additional testing in the factory or whatever and um, effectively were you know, burnt or broken in before they actually even been used by me. Um, so I bought a set of Mallory 150s which are the same capacitors that I'd used previously and um, did the burn in with them. And I also then went to my local electronic supplier and got some generic ones. Now the generic ones were so cheap um, that the entire set needed for a deluxe. Um, this is just the coupling capacitors. I didn't bother with the electrolytics because um, the Sprags are the same ones I'd used in the previous test. Um, but the entire set of generic ones cost less than a single one of the Jupiter capacitors that were in there originally. So this is the Mallory's at zero and then 72 hours, followed by the generic ones at zero and 48. So there did seem to be a minute improvement with both of those, uh, almost imperceptible with the Mallory's and a bit more obvious with the generic ones. Still only a tiny change though and the budget ones didn't sound as good in the first place, uh, which at least was some good news I guess, uh, given the price difference. So the answer as to whether or not capacitors break in or burn in with use is um, a definite maybe. Based on these tests I would have to say that some of them do, but it is subtle. Um, it would seem to be more obvious with the cheaper ones, which is probably good news. Um, so why did I hear a clear improvement before? At this point, all I can think is that the Chinese preamp tubes I was using, which I'd kept in for the burn-in and the recording, um, were actually burning in and improving in tone, um, along with in changing the capacitors. Now, I tend to prefer the sound of the Chinese ones, and I've done some tests with those, and they seem to sound more like the vintage ones, a bit softer. Um, but these days, I tend to use rebranded ones, and so as part of the rebranding, they're supposed to be tested for, you know, performance, you know, microphonics, noise, etc. And to do that, they obviously have to run them, you know, at voltage um, to test them. And so I assume what that's doing is actually the same as the burn-in that would have been happening before with the ones that hadn't gone through the same sort of testing. Um, and so if it's not that, I really have no idea what else it could be, um, but that seems like the most logical and um, likely explanation. In the next video, I'll compare different brands and types of capacitor to hear if there's any truth to the idea that different construction types of the same value component actually will affect the tone. Uh, so as always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and um, I'll hopefully see you soon when you come and watch the next video.